Right, I think start time is 11.45, so thank you everybody for coming. Um, my name is Adam Smith. My title is Lead Developer Relations Manager. I'll tell you a little bit more about what that means in just a second. Uh, it can be a confusing title the first time you hear it. Um, today, uh, we're talking about optimizing mobile augmented reality applications. Um, battery overheating, two major issues uh, in AR development for mobile. And so we're going to talk about ways that we can alleviate that very simple editor settings, very simple bits of code to optimize your battery life and, and, and all intensive effort to avoid overheating. Um, so, but who am I? Um, I manage two groups at Unity. The first is enterprise support. The second is professional services. Um, enterprise support, what we are, um, we are, we don't work on the engine itself unless we're fixing bugs. But what we do is we partner with the largest studios out there. So if you can think of the largest studios, the most notable Unity titles, um, odds are that our, our team is involved in most every one of those on the uh, Unity side of the fence. Um, and then professional services, um, what we do, um, we are able to for form targeted strike teams to alleviate uh, very project specific issues. So if somebody notifies us that they're having this very specific issue and they don't have the expertise to implement that editor feature or a custom tool or something of that nature, um, there are mechanisms in place to activate our team so that we can assist at the project level um, for implementing those within your project. Um, and I'm as much a fan of Unity as I am an employee of Unity. Unity was actually my dream job, dreams come true. Uh, here I am talking to you guys. Um, so I've been doing Unity development for about 10 years since uh, the day Unity 2 shipped. I was at a studio in Orange County, California. Um, we switched um, from internal tech to Unity and I fell in love with the workflow, C-sharp, component-based, absolutely loved the workflow. So after we shipped our game in Unity 4, um, I came to Unity and I've been here ever since and I've loved every second of it. And again, um, today we're gonna be discussing simple things you can do at the editor, very simple bits of code to optimize um, your battery life and some overheating issues that you may be experiencing, uh, which are especially important in AR development for mobile. Primary goal, um, get you to encourage some of your editor settings and decide for yourself, are your current settings appropriate for your project? And if not, then we're gonna help you optimize. Okay, on the enterprise support team, we find day in, day out, as we're looking at AR projects, that battery issues, overheating, they're always present early in a life cycle. And if you don't plan for those early on, then it's something that can just feature creep on you and grow and grow and snowball or heat ball as it is. Um, so let's talk about how to alleviate that. There are three very simple things we find almost every time. So our team, we operate what are called project reviews. Every week, every day, we're in different studios and we're there for two or three days at a time and we do a code review. Um, and then basically after we look at a very large project, uh, we performance profile, and then we go back and we do a ton of research and we provide our partner a very comprehensive written report that says, all right, these are all the performance issues we found, and these are our best practices on how to alleviate those. Our team focuses on three or four things primarily, which are performance, optimization, stability, education of best practices, how to use Unity in the most performant, optimized, and efficient way possible. Now. This seems basic to look at the Unity profiler, but the thing I love about Unite is that we have people from major studios, we have somebody writing their game for the first time, somebody who's yet to write their first line of code. And so I always start with the basics. And so the first thing we do whenever we walk into a studio is we crack open the profiler. If you're not using the profiler, if you don't know what it is, learn what it is. Uh, window profiler, it's just another Unity window, you can dock it and it is one of the most useful tools within the editor for identifying performance issues. Now, um, you can attach different types of profilers within the profiler window. There you can see that I have CPU and GPU uh, profilers attached. Uh, there's memory and other types of profiling available in the Unity profiler. And the great thing is, once you start writing your game in the editor, it'll scroll by, and then you can click into the window and scrub over with your arrow keys, or click around with your mouse frame by frame, and you can see exactly what's taking up every millisecond of time on your CPU. So if you're not using the Unity Profiler or if you don't know what it is, I highly encourage you, first and foremost, get, get familiar with it. We're gonna be looking at it uh, during this talk. So the reason I showed, let me back up one slide, the CPU and the GPU there are because minimizing work on the CPU and GPU will increase your battery life and create less heat. If you're doing less on the hardware, 
and you're going to, it's just going to increase your battery life. It's going to create less heat, you know, for obvious reasons. Um, so let's create less work for the CPU and the GPU. So first, frames per second. Let me talk about this for a second. We have a lot of AR devs that are coming from VR. And in VR, you're always chasing every frame. And when you do that in AR, you may be doing unnecessary computations, unnecessary cycles. We find that almost every single studio, when we walk in, they're aiming for 60 frames per second on mobile. They almost always ship with 30 frames per second. We, we, we have a lot of insight into different major studios, their play test groups, uh, their user groups uh, for testing purposes. And when they hand multiple users a device running the application at 60 FPS, 30 FPS, nobody ever complains when they get the 30 FPS device. Almost never happens. Nobody ever calls it out from the user side. So if, if your game is amenable to running at 30 FPS, you're going to save yourself a lot of headache. Your goal to hit 30 FPS is only 33 millisecond on the CPU instead of 16 millisecond goal um, for 60 FPS. And that's as simple as that. And through code, very simple, through application.targetFrameRate, you can just set whatever integer value you want uh, within code to clamp your FPS. This is the most simple of the three things we're going to be talking about. But I highly advise you, if you're chasing 60 frames per second, think about 30. Because if you, if you can accept 30, then a, something we're talking about here in a moment is going to be very useful to you. Second is physics. We see AR projects all the time that are very physics heavy. And if you can, again, if you can accept 30 frames per second, you're going to get some free things out of the box that you probably aren't even aware that are in the editor. So let's talk about that. So I have this project that I call Bouncy Ball Test. It's a, it's a very simple scene. It's just tons of cubes, each with a bouncy ball, uh, with a physics material attached, so that, you know, with a rigid body and a physics material, so it will just bounce uh, off the cube. So I'm going to show you the project. I'm going to minimize this for just a moment and show. I'm going to hop over to Unity. And here's my project. It's just a sea of these balls. That's all it is. And if, if you're curious to look at the prefab, um, then here it is. Well, I guess quick joke time. I cannot wait to name these nested prefab underscore bouncy platform. Yay for nested prefabs. I am very excited that we finally have these. Um, so I'm going to undo that, actually, for now. Uh, well, actually, I'll leave it. Uh, all right, so I'm just going to drag it in so that we can take a look at this. And you'll see that all it is, every one of these are very simply a cube with a ball. And this ball, all it is, it has a rigid body to calculate the physics. It has this physics material attached. And that's it. Very simple scene. Just a gazillion of these bouncy balls. So I'm going to press play so you can see exactly what the application does. There's really no mystery to this. Oh, and with this being AR uh, focused, hello everybody, good to see you. Let's turn on the webcam there. All right, so the application is very simply bouncy balls. That is it. Now, let's look at what's happening in the profiler. It's screaming at us. If you're familiar with the uh, profiler, you know that orange means physics, and that much physics is bad. So we're already eclipsing 60 millisecond, which means we're sub 60 FPS, but we don't even want to be at 60. We only want to be at 30. So we want to be about 33 milliseconds. So we could just say, OK, we're using about half of our uh, CPU allocation if we're aiming for 30 FPS, because in all reality, we could get our CPU up to 33 milliseconds, but we want to optimize in a more efficient way than just taking it for what it is. So that's the project. Very simple, just tons of bouncy balls. And so let's hop back over to our presentation for a moment, and then let's continue. And the, I'm going to put all this advice to test. Um, very shortly in front of your eyes. And we're going to do a before and after and see what the results are. Now, within the editor, uh, there we are. Within the editor, um, there's something called a time manager. And within the time manager, you're able to adjust something called the fixed time step. The default fixed time step is 0 0.02. That is very efficient for projects that are running between 50 and 60 FPS. But if you're going to accept that your project can run at 30 FPS, that's calculating too fast. And you can get some cy computation cycles back just by adjusting that and setting the time manager, the fixed time step within the time manager to run at a different uh, rate. So let's look at what that should be. If you're going to ship at 30 frames per second, 0 0.0334 is as fast as you need your fixed time step to run. 
I see a lot of people taking pictures of that, so I will leave that up for a moment. Everything else can stay the same, but your fixed time step should be 0 0.0334. All right, so we've talked about frames per second. We've talked about the rate at which you need to do physics calculations. And thirdly, resolution. All right, on mobile, there is one thing that we find almost in every project. We say this every day to almost every studio that we walk into on every project that we see. And these are projects big and small. If you could think of all the titans of the game industry, we work with most of them, and uh, Unity doesn't make it obvious that one, one of the things that your devices are doing is this. Most mobile devices will default an app to the native resolution of the device. And that's invisible to you for the most part, but that can be fixed very simply with just screen.set resolution, and then you can set it to whatever you want. Very simple thing. Now, let's talk about an actual device, a very popular device that ships out in the wild. Oh, I see people taking pictures. I'll put it back up for a second. Sorry about that. Okay. I'm going to minimize this once again to hop back over to Unity. Boom. All right. Now, I'm going to roll that up. What I have here is a game object called Resolution Manager, and I have a very simple uh, script attached to it. So the start width and start height that you see in the inspector, those are representative of a very popular Android device, a very, very popular Android device. The default resolution for that device is 1080 by 2220, very large, um, and your phone is only about that big. You don't need all that space on your phone. But almost every single mobile device will default your Unity application to its uh, native resolution. So we find about half of what the native resolution is is usually great, and you're not going to lose fidelity. And again, with the play test groups and whatnot, uh, there's no complaints. So I've set, I've set the, uh, the target resolution to be half of what the native resolution is. And let, me, let me give you an example of what that actually looks like. So I'm going to minimize Unity real quick, or just do this. I'm going to build this application to my desktop. And while that builds, I will tell you, oh, it's right there, it's quick. Um, I have this other game object here called Resolution Manager, which has a very simple, oh, I've already told you what it does. So you'll see that I have a key code button attached here, which I have the button R assigned to. Basically what that does, when the app starts, it's gonna start at what would be the mobile uh, device's native resolution. But when I press the button R, it's going to change it to my target resolution that I actually want to display to the user. So you're going to see now when this starts, that a native phone resolution is too big for my desktop, for my laptop screen. It's probably too big for your user's hand, too. But if I press R, it's going to give me my target, up, my target resolution. It's much better. And when you do that, you're going to, there's going to be a lot of benefits uh, that your hardware is going to see. So let's close that. Let's go back to the editor. So what is the TLDR of these three things? Let's go back into presentation mode. Let's recap, and then we'll put it all to the test, real time. So first, if you're chasing 60 FPS, evaluate if you actually need to. Two, your physics time step, optimize it for your project. Three, your native resolution is probably not necessary for your user. So taking advantage of those three things, I bet you'll get some free CPU and GPU back. So let's put this to the test. Let's combine all three things and take a look at the before and after. All right, back over to Unity. I don't know if you can see it very well or not, but here I have native resolution and adjusted resolution. So let's set the native resolution. FPS manager, I have this script attached. What I showed you in the slide, it's just that simple to clamp my FPS at 30. So I'm an, I enabled this game object to clamp it, or I'm going to enable it right now to clamp it at 30 FPS. Resolution manager, I'm going to set my target resolution. But first, with, with, a, with the default fixed time step, actually, let me unclamp the frames per second. With the, with the game running as fast as it can, and with the resolution looking native, we're gonna be around this. We have a terrifyingly high CPU rate, and physics is just going crazy. Now, frankly, I designed this project with tons and tons of physics-based balls to abuse the physics system to prove the point. All right, now, let's do this. 
FPS manager. I'm going to enable that. So that's going to clamp my frame rate at 30. I'm going to change this to my adjusted resolution. And I'm going to go to project settings, time, fixed time step. I'm going to back that out, 0 0.0334. And let's look at the before and after. Now, everybody realizes what they're looking at. This, before I press play, everybody realizes what you're, most people understand what they're looking at when they look at this in the, in the profiler. I see a lot of people saying yes. All right, so this is the before and after, just enabling those three bits of best practices that I just described to you. There's your free CPU and GPU back. You can clap. <laughs> so performance, optimization, stability, best practices, these are the types of things that we teach day in, day out to the large major studios of the world. And rest easy knowing that if you're having performance problems, that all the big guys are too, and our team exists to go solve those same issues that you're facing in your one, two, or three person shop, if you're making a game at home, you are very likely facing the, facing the exact same best practice issues that, uh, that our friends at the, in the stratosphere are as well. So those three things. So your frames per second, your target resolution, your physics time step, if you adjust those three things, you're going to get some huge benefits there. Now, how much time have we got? Let's hop back over to our presentation very quickly. And, all right, hardware is matching much, the hardware is working way less, and the net result of that, your battery is going to run much more efficiently, much longer. Your device is going to create way less heat. You're gonna have happier players, and you're gonna be pulling your hair out less, unless you've already lost it all like I have, so. Um, one more bonus tip, one more bonus tip. So this is something that we've started to realize more recently. Um, it's just something that we didn't even notice at first ourselves going into these large studios, but there was something that we noticed over time. There were a couple specific projects that keyed us off on this particular thing. So I've given this talk at SIGGRAPH, I've given this talk at GDC, but since GDC, something else dawned on me really about two weeks ago. Uh, I was in a studio and I saw a particular thing and I was like, wait a minute, there's something wrong here. Your test devices. Let's assume that you've got good analytics on your users and you know exactly what devices they're using. You probably have those devices in your test suite. Great job, smiley face. But are you recreating the actual environment that your users are using those devices in? Probably not. I've noticed with my own eyes something very particular about every device suite at almost every studio we walk into and I've started calling it out to studios that are doing mobile AR development. One thing for them to think about. When you are testing your device, well, if, if, you're, if, if you're a small shop or a small team, maybe you're not offending this, but just one thing I want to tell you is, my phone is in a completely sealed case. My iPhone 8 is in a completely sealed case. And guess what these cases are fantastic at doing? Can anybody guess? Trapping heat, yep. Every single studio we walk into, their device suite, the device suite in our secure room in San Francisco, um, they're just bare exposed devices, and they're, let, they're, they're being ventilated in a much more efficient way. And so what I would tell you is that your users are playing with the case, or not all of them, um, but probably at least conservatively 30%, probably above 50% of your users are playing with the case on. And so if you're doing mobile AR development, I highly, highly, highly recommend you put a very thick case on your phone. I have an OtterBox, I love the OtterBox. It completely encompasses the phone. It's not exposed at all, and uh, it's good. It's you know, it's a good representation case here. And so, I, I like to test with my case on. I like. I'm now notifying our studios. Uh, they're doing mobile AR dev that you should definitely have your de test devices in a case. And you need to account for that. And so, really, um, that is it. Thank you very much. And then we have. <laughs> Thank you very much. And then we have a few minutes if anybody has questions. I'm, we, have about, we have about 10 minutes, I believe. I'm happy to hang around and answer some questions if you guys have any. Or if not, I'll just be hanging out right by the door. <laughs> All right, thanks everybody. All right, bye-bye.